You know, if you believed that the story of the Eighth Espada Xylopodo Grands both began and ended within the pages of Bleach itself, I certainly couldn't blame you. After all, he had a pretty lengthy run as a supporting antagonist within the series, even reappearing in the most recent Hell chapter. But the character goes even further than that, and there is more to the truth of Xyloporo, at least according to the light novel Spirits Are Forever With You, than I think many people would have ever come to expect. It turns out that at one point, Xyloporo was a considerably more formidable and fearsome character than the one we would eventually come to know. In fact, he was so strong that he was actually an all-powerful Vasto Lord serving under the reign of King Barragon before eventually ascending and attaining the rank of the very first Zero Espada in Aizen's newly established Arankar army. And in fact, it was during this period of time where Xyloporo was still fused with his brother Ilforte, they were still one whole singular being, that Xyloporo decided to create a clone of himself in his most powerful form. Now, this clone, which would come to represent the truest nature of the Brothers Grands, would eventually come to be known as Cien many, many years from his creation, and he plays a massive role in this supplementary Bleach side story. And so to coincide with CN Granz's arrival, his upcoming release in the mobile game Bleach Brave Souls, it's finally time to take a look at this mysterious light novel exclusive character who would go on to become one of, if not the single most powerful Arankar in all of Bleach. But of course, before we can even get to CN Granz or even talk about that character, we have to begin with Xyloporo, who really is in many ways the most important player in this story. Now, Xyloporo Grands, like many of the Espada, doesn't really get any semblance of backstory whatsoever in the canon story. Really, the closest thing he gets is a single throwaway line by Noitra Jiruga, who mentions that Xyloporo at one point was an Espada, but has since been demoted and kicked out. Now, we never find out why Xyloporo was demoted or what rank he even was, but it seems like this backstory given to him and his brother in Spirits Are Forever With You really wants to remedy that. And I can't help but wonder if this whole new backstory simply came into existence by being spun off of that one line. But the history of Xyloporo and Ilforte takes us hundreds of years back into the past prior to Aizen's defection, and we find out that both of these characters were once human in the employ of a mysterious nation. And their backstory is fittingly dark and sinister, particularly where Xyloporo is concerned for one of the most morally questionable characters in the entire series. But it turns out that Xyloporo was the foremost alchemist for this nation, really pushing the boundaries of what was achievable via science, while his brother Ilforte was one of the leading generals of the nation's army. And already we can see that they are two halves of the same whole, brains and brawn. But the two of them worked in tandem together to help Xyloporo concoct his monstrous experiments. After defeating other armies in battle, Ilforte would use his influence to take prisoners of war and give them to his little brother to ensure that Xyloporo had a continuous string of involuntary experiment subjects. Over time, Xyloporo amassed a pretty massive gallery of victims, but their vengeance wouldn't go unabated. Together, over time, the victims' anguish, their pain, their lust for revenge in the afterlife would coalesce and create a monstrous hollow, which would go on to kill both Xyloporo and Ilforte when they visited the lab together. While this might seem like Xyloporo's victims were finally given the justice they desired, it didn't quite go according to plan, because upon dying, upon being ravaged by this monstrous hollow, Xyloporo was absolutely elated by the prospect. He was incredibly happy to have been killed, incredibly excited to have died and discovered this new plane of existence. And hungry 
for both knowledge and to keep growing stronger and stronger, Xyloporo turned on the spirit of his brother Ilfor and began to devour him as well, before even eating the very hollow that killed them both. And Xyloporo just grew and grew in accumulative strength, devouring hollows and becoming this all-powerful, as we mentioned earlier, Vasto Lord who would eventually go on to serve Barrigan. A part of me does wonder if these events really work with the character's personality, Xyloporo being the more bookish one and Ilforte being the more physically domineering one, you think he would be the one that would turn on Xyloporo and see him as weak trash and devour him, but at the same time Xyloporo has been shown already in the series to have total disdain and disregard for his brother anyway, and really just wants to do things that will further him and further his pursuit of knowledge. And of course we have seen a very literal interpretation of him feasting on another hollow as well. But once Aizen conquers Waco Mundo, he makes Xyloporo in this new Vasto Lord form the first Zero Espada of his army, obviously way before Yami was even really a thing. But although Xyloporo has immense power, he has rank, he has title, really he has everything you think he might want. What he truly desires, what he truly cherished most was his value as a scientist, and he wanted to become the perfect being, which has always been Zyle's goal, and to achieve that he believed that he needed to acquire this power of Gabriel, which we see in Bleach itself. And so, believing that the violent instincts of his brother after having consumed him were basically limiting his potential as a scientist, Xyloporo would excise himself of Il Forte, of his brother's influence, and of his brother's power, seriously weakening his body, seriously weakening himself, and reverting himself from a Vasto Lord to an Ajukas, and being demoted and booted out of the Espada at the same time. So having ripped Il Forte's soul from himself and essentially giving his brother life once again to eventually become an Arankar of his own stature, Xyloporo has kind of given up all of this power he once had, his position within the Espada, because it doesn't mean anything to him in comparison to becoming that ultimate Phoenix-style archangel being. But eventually he would be allowed back into the Espada at the Octava position after finally acquiring that long sought after Gabriel power. I like this backstory which does essentially serve as both backstory for Xyloporo but also the story of the birth of CN as well. I do actually quite like it. It feels like it's trying to do a lot of heavy lifting. Like I said earlier, we didn't ever really find out too much about Xyloporo and it feels like this backstory took it upon itself to tell us really as much as it possibly could to show us how Xyloporo got to the point where he was today. I also think it's cool as well because a hollow goes to hell based on the crimes they committed as a human, and so it makes a lot of sense that Xyloporo would not only go to hell but now be effectively this ambassador, this jailer of hell, based on what we know about his time as a human. But as I mentioned, this backstory feels like it's trying to do a lot at once, it feels like it's trying to fill in those gaps left over by Xyle in the canon story itself, but I also wonder if it's trying to give this idea of the Zero Espada a little bit more prominence, a little bit more gravitas rather than it just being Yami, who is this massive buffoon, and who, for many people, the idea of him being this almost mythical Zero Espada just really didn't work, as I mentioned in this video I did entirely on that subject. It feels like giving it to this instead legendary version of Xyloporo, who in and of himself is a much more popular character than Yami, feels like a course correction, perhaps, in some ways. As it is with a lot of the material in the light novels, while I do like this backstory and I'm always for characters being given backstories, I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about this whole situation. The fact that Xyloporo, of all characters, was at one point the Zero Espada, and I guess in some ways it does make a bit of sense, and I like the idea of him excising himself of that power just because he wants to further his scientific study in many ways. That does fit the character quite well, but it is also just, just kind of weird to think about. You would never really would imagine Xyloporo in that kind of situation at all prior to this. But this brings us to CN Grans, who, like I said, is a clone of Xyloporo back before he split himself from his brother. So at his most powerful version, and potentially at his most unstable version as well, because he still is feeling the influence of Il Forte over his mind, over the fact that 
rather than just being this pure scientist, there is that bloodlust inside him as well that's making it difficult to focus down on what he truly wants. Much like his original, who was a monstrous lunatic, CN is very much the same, except he doesn't share Xylopodo's thirst and passion for science because of the influence of Ilfort. Instead, CN is a little more hot-headed, a little more of a loose cannon, and would rather just finish things with a good old-fashioned fisticuff-style fight, a brute force-style fight, rather than using, as he says, Xylopodo's silly magic tricks. Now, initially, CN, hence the name, is Arankar number 100, and he has the tattoo of 100 on his eyeball. Other cool things about CN's design, which we can really see in his Brave Souls character, is that some of his hair is blonde, which again is another reference to Il Forte himself, and some of his Reiatsu mixed in with Xylopodo's pink Reiatsu is yellow as well, again a reference to the other Grand's brother. But it is cool to see that Xylopodo is so clearly the dominant soul here. CN has the same Resurrection as Xylopodo. He can activate Sip for Nicarus, turning him into virtually the same, although the design is slightly different. He now has massive, almost eldritch bat wings that look very, very similar to Aizen's final Fragor form, um, with these kind of strange drooping eyes in the centre of them. And other than that, he does look virtually the same. He has that same hollow mask fragment on the side of his face, but now it's got a slight horn coming off of it again, which is a reference to Il Forte's eventual bull-style hollow form. But being eventually Xyloporo Prime, CN is of course immensely powerful, and that's what I said about him being perhaps the strongest Aranka in the entire series. It's mentioned in the novel that this guy can fire a Cero that looks so amazingly strong that other Hollows think he's using a Gran Ray Cero when in reality he's just firing a regular one. He can also use Xyloporo's abilities, especially in Resurrection, things like Teatro de Tietre, and also abilities like the clones as well. But unlike his original, unlike Xyloporo, CN can't use them anywhere near as effectively. Again, wanting to abandon these silly magic tricks to just fight to the death instead. And that's the bloodlust of Il Forte coming through. Now, I'll be honest, Il Forte is a weird character because we don't really get to see him much at all in the series. He obviously gets his one spotlight fight against Renji much earlier on in the Iran Car arc than Xyloporo would appear. And I never really got the impression that Il Forte was like that bloodthirsty, was that hungry for battle. But I think it can work at the end of the day, especially when you see things like him goring Ururu with his massive bullhorn. That sort of thing does give away the impression that he is certainly a more physical fighter than his younger brother. But going back to this idea of CN's overall power level and how he actually looks and appears to other hollows, it is said that his Reiatsu exceeds that of Yami Largo's released form, Yami being the current present day Zero Espada. And also this idea of him firing a regular Cero that looks like a Gran Ray Cero, I always kind of thought that was the idea with Yami as well. When he leashes that massive Cero at Zaraki during their fight, I mean, it's crazy looking. It's easily, I would argue, the biggest Cero we ever see in the series, and Zaraki himself even comments on how impressive it is. So I would imagine other hollows in any kind of vicinity would think that that was at least on that kind of level as well. So it makes sense to me that these comparisons are being made. But I want to do a proper video on the story of Spirits Are Forever With You in the future, but looking at it from CN's perspective, he manages to break into the Gote 13's R&D department. At this point, he basically does just look exactly like Xylopodo. It is weird to have this idea of a fully functioning clone in the Bleach universe. It's not really the first time this idea has been explored, but at the same time, it seems to be... I would argue something very impressive that Xyloporo can do, and Mayuri, you know, mocks Xyle for really e e questioning if he's even a real scientist at all, but if this is something that Xyloporo had achieved in the past, I'm surprised he's never mentioned it before. Especially since Xyloporo craves this idea of being a perfect being, here he could say that he has effectively created life. I guess there's a possibility that since Xyloporo created this clone before he split with Il Forte, there's a decent chance that those memories no longer exist for him. I believe it is mentioned that CN has in some ways an upper hand over Xyloporo because he can still remember their earliest days, because he is still that version, whereas Xyloporo has forgotten those times. So I guess that would explain why this is never mentioned in the 
in the present day story. But CN breaks into Myrie's laboratory and finds that Xylopolo's corpse is still there. Myrie has effectively done exactly what he said he would do and put him in a labelled jar, pickling him for future research. And CN is trying to merge again with Xyloporo to become one being once more. Finding that he for some reason can't, he takes the corpse and escapes with it into a garganta, creating a room where he can at least buy himself a bit of time. There's a really interesting character moment for Cien when Mayuri catches up to him, and Cien believes himself to be Xyloporo. He thinks that he is the original until he has this fact deconfirmed to him by Mayuri, which angers him greatly. There is actually a really interesting line here that I think, with new context, is fascinating. Basically, Mayuri is at first wondering if this is the real Xyloporo, if he wonders if he's come back to life somehow, and he says, you know, I'm definitely, I'm pretty sure that you passed on into hell. And he says, you know, have you escaped hell? If so, I'd like to find out more about that and how you manage that. And of course, you know, with the with the hell chapter and all that, that's uh, definitely takes on a slightly new perspective, I would say. But CN begins to remember that power he once had as the Zero Espada and escapes once again. And Nemu analyzes the Reatsu left over and confirms that it is in the range of Yami Largo's Resurrection, putting him on the same pedestal as the current Zero Espada as well. But CN finds the character of Roka Paramiya, who is someone we're also going to talk about very shortly, and tries to dismantle her, but he's apprehended and found by Zoraki Kenpachi. Ryogo narrator just loves Zoraki, that should be really obvious as he puts him up against virtually every major enemy these light novels have. But they get into a really cool, massive fight where CN tries to use the same tricks that Xylopoda might have used, but abandons them pretty quickly, realising that A, they're not working, and B, he just can't use them anywhere near as well as his original could, and decides to take Zoraki down in a hand-to-hand -hand brute force style fight, which is very different for Xyloporo and so really cool to see someone of his ilk in this kind of fight. There's this constant theme of decay and degradation with CN. Over time, he is losing more and more of what made him similar to Xyloporo, which is why he eventually decides on just having a massive throwdown with Zaraki instead of messing around with all this trickery. And actually, he proves himself to be a pretty worthy opponent, fighting Zoraki for over an hour and eventually forcing him to remove his eye patch. Now, admittedly, Yami was doing effectively the same thing, but Yami in the manga itself always appeared to be weak, never really putting up much of a fight, whereas you get the impression here that Zoraki and Cien are at least clashing at a somewhat similar level. However, as a Shiro Sawyer arrives on the scene, forcing CN to abandon the fight and run to Waco Mundo to try and capture Roka once again. The two of them fight, but she eventually gets the better of him, utilising her power of being able to copy and use the power of Mugetsu, though she doesn't say its name because she feels she's unworthy of saying it, she's kind of stolen this all-powerful ability that Ichigo sweated and reached the pinnacle of despair to use against Aizen. She feels she can't say its name, she can't speak its name for fear of her unworthiness in that regard, but she uses Mugetsu all the same to cleave CN effectively in two, completely, you know, destroying him, and as he's being completely just buffeted but suffocated by the immense blackness that is the moonless sky ability of Ichigo's, CN realises that he won't be able to fulfil his promise to Zoraki to come back and end their fight. And it's cool because this is effectively the final moment of CN's character as we know him. He is just being completely obliterated by Mugetsu, as you would be. Um, and as his soul is slowly being chipped away, again, going back to that idea of decay, eventually all that is left, the parts of Xyloporo are stripped away, Il Forte is stripped away, his, his bloodlust is kind of stripped away, and all that is left is that promise to Zaraki to come back and finish their fight, and that becomes his driving motivation. CN survives Mugetsu, but his soul has been so pulled apart that all that is left, really, is a young, childlike Arankar who is now living with Roka and Ashido in the forest of Menos, and CN is basically training to one day fulfil that promise to Zoraki Kenpachi, because that's all that's in his mind now, is that last promise he made, the promise he lamented not being able to keep in his final moments as CN itself. And so we see that 
that is where the story leaves him. We, we find out that the Vandenreich would eventually invade Waco Mundo, but it seems like CN and Roker and all the, all Ashido, etc. were mostly kept away from all that by by uh, virtue of being inside the forest of Menos at the time. But that is basically it for the character of C.N. Grands, without going super deep into the story of Spirits Are Forever with you. He's an intriguing character nonetheless, something unlike anything we've ever really seen in Bleach before, a full-on clone of a previous character's previous form. That's really weird, but I think it makes for a really intriguing character. His Resurrection does look really cool and really menacing and just very overbearing, and I love that. But I think perhaps what I like most about CN is the way he embodies the Brothers Grands entirely, both Xylopodo and Ilforte. Feeling that desire for knowledge and wanting to push himself as a scientist, but also wanting to fight and kill things and be bloodlusted like Ilforte supposedly was. Bringing these two characters together and finding that ultimately they are incompatible and so Xyloporo just rips Ilforte from his very being and loses, sacrifices all of that power, but not before he had made a backup of it. So I think that's really fascinating overall. Let me know, guys, in the comments what you think of the character of C.N. Grands in the light novel of Spirits Are Forever With You. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you like this guy, or is the whole concept of Xyloporo being the Zero Espada a little too much for you to stomach? Do let me know in the comments below. Guys, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I really appreciate the support, and hopefully we get more traction on the YouTube algorithm. And as always, a massive thank you and shout-out goes out to everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You can do the same for as little as a dollar a month and you'll get videos early as well. But of course, you don't have to do that. But a huge thank you as always goes out to each and every one of you. And guys, until next time, I'll catch you later. And I'll see you then.